morning church hope everyone is doing good you i we believe that you had a beautiful week you know it's so beautiful to worship god you know he's a, he's a living god he's our lord savior he knows everything it's so privileged to worship him and and thank you so much you know uh, we are thanking god for everyone and you know i just felt to uh, read psalms 42 it's really a beautiful scripture it says that I long to drink of you O oh God drinking deeply from the streams of pleasure flowing from your presence my longings overwhelm for more of you my soul thirst pants and longs for the living God I want to come and see the face of God day and night my tears keep falling and my heart keep crying for your help while my enemies smoke me over and over saying where is the god of yours why does he help you so i speak over my heartbroken soul take courage remember when you used to be right out front leading the procession of praise when the great crowd of worshipers gathered to go into the presence of the lord amen you know it's so beautiful you know uh, you don't know what situation you are going through but but as we are gathered to worship our lord you know he's he's there for us he's beside of us he's in us you no know, he sees our heart he sees our uh, he sees our deep deep you know our heart and he understands our cry when no when it's it does not matter when others don't see or others don't understand but our lord jesus understands and sees and we are longing to worship him and everything has a reason you know it's 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 so beautiful to worship our lord yes lord as we go, gather lord jesus to worship you give us in heart to worship you father lord jesus oh thank you so much for this great great privilege to worship you lord jesus lord we ask your forgiveness clean us clean us lord jesus because you're great great lord We welcome you Father Lord. There's a reason why we are not overtaken There's a reason why we sing on through the night There's a reason why our hope remains eternal Jesus is alive Praise the King, He is risen. I praise the King, He is alive. I praise the King, death defeated. Hallelujah, He is alive. Hallelujah, He is alive.
Praise the King He is risen Praise the King He is alive Praise the King A damn defeated Hallelujah He is alive Hallelujah He is alive Grave could not ignore it, and all is heaven's glory. Hell, where is you with that where is you street? The world could not ignore it, and all these things are roaring. Hell, where is you with that where is you street? The grave could not ignore it, and all is heaven's glory. why the curse of sin is broken there's a reason why the darkness runs from light there's a reason why we are standing now as forgiven there's a reason why we are not overtaken there's a reason why we are singing through the night there's a reason why our hope remains yes Lord because Jesus is alive You're alive, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You're alive, Lord Jesus. You're alive, Lord Jesus. You're alive, Lord Jesus. You're alive, Lord Jesus.
Let your heaven come in our nation. Oh, let your heaven come in our life, Lord. Let your heaven come in our relationship. Oh, Let you even come in our yes, nation, yes, Lord. Lord. Let you even come in our in our in the ministry which we are doing, Lord Jesus. Oh, let your heaven, Lord. We want to see your heaven, Lord Jesus. Oh, we want to see your kingdom, Lord Jesus. We want to see your kingdom, Lord Jesus. We want to see your kingdom in our nation. Oh, your kingdom. We are the citizen of our Lord Jesus' kingdom, Lord. We are the citizen of your kingdom, Lord Jesus. We want to see your kingdom. Oh, we want to see your kingdom. Every corner in our in our in our nation, every corner in our city, every corner in the village, every corner. We want to see your kingdom. Just your kingdom. Oh, we are proclaiming your name. We are proclaiming your name.
presence you Jesus Lord you are worthy of everything Lord you deserve all the glory you are worthy of it all Lord Lord in Isaiah 6 says Lord when the angels when they open their eyes they see that the Lamb of God sitting in the throne and they they try to find something and they try the holiness they try to see the holiness then when they started seeing the holiness the light they couldn't stand they couldn't open their eyes they started closing their eyes they started covering their self they started covering with uh, every uh, like like their feet and their body everything with their wings Lord even the, the song says all the saints and angels they all before they bow before you Lord your throne and all the elders whenever they realize that yes you are holy and you're worthy to be praised they cast their crowns and they they cast their face on they bury their face on the ground they just prostrate because there is no one like you Lord Jesus you're worthy of it all you're worthy of it all we praise you too. you are worthy of it all you are worthy of it all
feet all you're worthy Jesus but for you all our things and to you all our things yes Lord from you Lord and for you Lord Jesus you deserve the glory sing it again Oh, you are worthy of it all. You are the worthy Jesus. You are worthy. You are the Jesus. For for me you are all things, Lord. For you all things. I do you all things. You deserve the glory. There is only one. There is only one. God sitting in the throne. There is no one beside you, Lord. There is no one like you, Jesus. No, oh, there is only one king. There is only one king is sitting there in the throne, Lord. Oh, we worship you alone, Lord. Oh, you deserve all the praises. You deserve all our life glories, Lord. Oh, you deserve all the glory, Lord. Lord, you deserve all the glories that in our in our life, Lord. That's coming now. All the credits, everything, Lord, we give in to you, Lord Jesus, because everything, Lord, for you and from you, Lord Jesus, and you are the Alpha, and you are the beginning, and you are the ending, Lord Jesus. Oh Lord, everything, Lord Jesus, for you and from you, Lord Jesus. Oh. Yes. You know when I don't see Never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see that you're working, even when I don't feel that you're working, never stop, you never stop working. Never stop, you never stop, God. Even when I don't see that you're working, even when I don't feel that you're working, never stop, you never stop working. Never stop, oh, you never stop.
Thank you, Jesus. 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 Lord.
you are. That's who you are, Lord Jesus. You are the way, the truth, and the life, Lord. That's who you are. You are the promise keeper. Yes. Oh, that's who you are, Lord that's Jesus. You are. you are our savior. Oh, yes. You are our protector. That's who you are, that's Lord Jesus. You, you never true. left us. You never yes. forsaken us. That's who you are, Lord. That you always you beside are. us. You always within us. That you are for who us. You are. That's who you are. That is 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 who you are, Lord. That is who you are. That is who you are. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you for who you are. We worship you for who you are, Lord. We worship you for who you are. What are you going to do, Lord Jesus? Your ways are higher than our own ways. Your ways are higher than our own ways. We don't want to lean on our own understanding, Lord. We don't want to lean on our own ways. We don't want to lean on people's opinion or people's understanding. We want to lean on you, Father, Lord Jesus. Because that's who you are. You are the promise keeper, Lord. We don't want to trust even ourselves, Lord Jesus. We want to trust and upon you Father Lord Jesus thank you so much Lord for giving us a heart to worship you thank you so much for for your glory Lord Jesus thank you so much for your presence Lord, Lord let your presence continue let it overflow in our life Lord day and night day and night thank you so much Father we are giving everything to you we are submitting everything in your hand Lord Jesus let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Uh, we'll just take um, uh, some time to uh, pray and intercede. Now, as usual, uh, like uh, we can pray for the nation, and also I just want to share a couple of uh, things here. Like uh, we know in India, there's a lot of people doesn't have a job, and people are really, you know, even the farm farmers are really struggling. They don't have a enough job, and there's a lot of laws came like the the other the other. You know, rich people are going to take over the land and they're going to lose their, the people, the farmers are uh, going to lose their land and, you know, stuff like that. And also I heard a news like, uh, you know, kind of WHO or someone, like they declare like uh, in 2021, uh, there's going to be a, like a big famine is going to come and uh, more than 150 lakh people, uh, you know, suffer uh, without food and anything. So... Now we know the God we are worshiping, you know, he can provide manna, you know, without, from nothing. And he provided that. And we are believing not only for the food, but all, for all the provisions. So we'll just pray today very quickly. So please pray along with us. And yeah, Lord Jesus, this morning we are praying that we believe in that, Lord, your presence and your glory is in everywhere, Lord Jesus. And first of all, we are praying, Lord, have mercy on our nation, India, Lord. Have mercy on our people, Lord. Have mercy on our leaders, Lord. Have mercy on our lands, Lord Jesus. So we are declaring, let your presence and let your king of glory come in this nation, Lord Jesus. Lord, we want to see the greatest, great changes in our nation, Lord. So this morning, we are praying and interceding with you, Lord. Because the Bible says, Lord, Jesus Christ is our mediator. He always intercedes for us. And the Holy Spirit is one that digging the deeper level uh, and showing and revealing the deeper level of Jesus Christ and God. So, Lord, we are praying, Lord, you show the things that, uh, that we can uh, really uh, we really facilitate everything, Lord Jesus. Not to fear, not to scare of things, Lord. Even the people declare that the greatest feminist is going to come, Lord. But you are faithful still. You are faithful and you are still 
able to provide you're still able to protect you're still able to heal you're still able to lord do everything in a mighty way lord this morning we are declaring everything in jesus mighty name lord that that feminine is not going to overcome the nations lord it's not going to overcome or rule over the people lord jesus the feminine is not uh, the feminine is not the uh, things that deciding the nations uh, like a design or anything lord you are the one your opinion is is the finest opinion is lord Lord, in everything, Lord. So we are praying and asking everything in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Amen. Uh, thank you, Brother Lino, for <clears throat> uh, sharing prayer points. And, you know, it's so beautiful to pray and hear from God. And we have few announcements. And, you know, uh, if you have missed last week's sermons, we have uploaded our, you know, sermons in uh, YouTube. SoundCloud and uh, iTunes, so go through that and be blessing. And uh, about uh, Titan offering, uh, we have our uh, bank detail on the screen, so just give it to God and God surely blesses us. Be a part of God's kingdom. And we have prophetic declaration, uh, you know, as we give our Titan offering to the Lord, we declare, when I give, I become more like Jesus. He taught me how to give by giving himself completely without holding anything to himself. When I give, I recognize I can never outgo give God. I can never go broke by giving to God and never come short of my needs because I have given to God. When I give, I co-create with him and co-partner with him to build his kingdom in and through me in India and in the nations of the world. This I declare in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, it's so beautiful to, you know, to proclaim. And now we have, you know, uh, the word of God time. You know, just prepare your heart and God will surely speak to us. As we read in Psalms 42 also, you know, the one who's long for God, you know, he feels the, he feels the dry, he feels the thirsty people. So hear from God and we're going to pray, we're going to pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this time, Lord. As we're going to hear the word of God, help us, Lord. We are preparing our heart, Lord Jesus. We are emptying ourselves so that you can fill us. Yes, Father, Lord, help us to apply. And also we pray for Talson as he's going to share, Lord Jesus. Lord, you, you lead him, Lord Jesus. Let your spirit lead him, Lord. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. So good to see you this morning. We are thrilled that you have joined this morning to worship the Lord with us. And if you are watching this in the evening on Facebook, in our Papa's House India page, we welcome you all in Jesus' name. We want to say we love you so much and we're praying for you. We are trusting the Lord's original design for your life to fulfill. And uh, just before we get into the word, I have, as usual, a small little joke to tell you. And uh, this story goes like this. There was an old lady and she was driving and then when she got into the store somehow her keys was locked in the car and she couldn't open the the car so she tried many things she even used uh, uh, like um, like coat hanger and stuff like that to try to take out and then she couldn't do that she was trying for more than 45 minutes and finally she said lord i just need a help and suddenly there was a guy with all his uh, tattoos and you know the big chains and leather jacket he was it's a big kind of a ruffian coming on a bike and uh, he said lady what's your problem and she said i need to open the car and boom in 15 seconds he opened the car and she said to him you are such a nice man thank you so much and this guy said lady it's not what you think i am i'm not a nice man i just got out of the prison for stealing cars and she said lord i thank you that you even sent a professional to help me <laughs> anyway i thought it was funny take your bible this is a precious word of god take your bible if you have your phones and you have mobile and you have bible in it take it and um, let's just pray father in the name of yeshua we thank you for giving us this privilege to come before your throne of grace and to pray and to seek your face and we thank you that this morning that you will speak to us uh, you will reveal your heart to us uh, you will take us one more step closer to you and you will help us 
to know you not just here in our minds certain information but you will help us to know you intimately so that you can transform us into the image of your son Jesus so we thank you father in Jesus mighty name Amen. You know, my prayer is every single time that I will step out of the way of God and God will have his way. Because I am here, my dear friends, not to just give you a nice um, feeling of, uh, wow, I got a nice sermon today. My goal is to be a channel where Papa can flow his word through me to you so that you can be transformed in the image of his son. The topic of this morning, or you're watching in the evening, the topic of this Sunday service is, it goes like this. Are you just a Christian or a disciple? <laughs> Are you just a Christian or a disciple? I want to read a couple of quotes to you and maybe this would be a, a blessing to start with. P perhaps some of you might know this guy called Duncan Campbell, a Scottish preacher in the early 20th century. Um, and he said this very, very profound statement. The kingdom of God is not going to be advanced by our churches becoming filled with men and women, but by men and women in our churches being filled with God. It's worth repeating. The kingdom of God is not going to be advanced by our churches being filled with men and women, but by men and women in our churches being filled with God. Guys, we live in a season right now. I don't know about you everywhere. One of the things that privilege that God has given me is to go around in different parts of the world. And I have seen this all the time that we are so occupied in gathering people on Sunday service and least bothered on how they live for the rest of the week. Does it make sense? We are so occupied as church, want to gather as many people on Sunday service so that we can tell the world or tell to ourselves and to tell to other peers that we are doing a good church service but then we least bother about that particular individual for the rest of the week. Listen to what G.K. Chesterton said this, an English journalist. We don't want, as the newspapers say, a church that will move with the world. We want a church that moved the world. <laughs> Ask yourself this question. Is my church... If you are not part of Papa's house, and this is a cry of my heart, as the Lord put me as the pastor, a shepherd of Papa's house, he is, he is asking me this question, and I am asking this before the throne of God. Am I, is this church moving with the world, or is this church moving the world? Let's pause here. Think about it for a moment. Pause here and think about it. Is your church moving with the world or is your church moving the world? And why I say this couple of statements because we as in this Christendom, we are so occupied in conversion and name changing and gathering on a particular day and we call it church and we are least concerned about that particular individual or a family or a community how they live Christ-like in their communities that brings a flavor and also a fragrance and a change in the places where they are. Listen, Jesus did not raise Christians. Jesus raised disciples. Jesus did not endorse a religion. Jesus did not say, I am a religious guru. Jesus did not say, you have to become religious to follow me. Jesus did never said, 
I am starting a new religion. In fact, he came and I've said this plenty of times and perhaps some of you are like, Charles, get over this. But let me tell you this, it has to penetrate in our hearts and mind. He never started a religion, but he showed us a kingdom, an upside down ultra kingdom. <laughs> a kingdom that is internal, but is also eternal. The kingdom that is here and now, but is also yet to come. My dear friends, the first requirement, if you're taking notes, take notes. If you're not taking notes, take notes. The first requirement of any disciple is to follow his or her master. That is the first requirement. If the master calls you, you got to follow. That is the first requirement. And I want you to pause here and I'm going to play a two minute video. I want to see this video, how it goes. It, then we will come back to it and talk about it. All right. Listen to this video. We live in the same world, Matthew. Next. Besides, what else are you going to do with a mind like yours? Matthew. Matthew, son of Alpheus. Yes. Follow me. Me? <laughs> yes, you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you doing? You want me to join you? Keep moving, street preacher. Do you have any idea what this guy has done? Do you even know him? Yes. Listen, I said to... What are you doing? Where do you think you're going? Guys, let me go. Have you lost your mind? You have money. Quintus protects you. No Jew lives as good as you. You're gonna throw it all away. Yes. I don't get it. You didn't get it when I chose you either. But this is different. I'm not a tax collector get used to different. I'm glad we passed by your booth today, Matthew. Yes. Shall we? We have a celebration to prepare for. You will regret this, Matthew. What's the tablet for? I grabbed it without thinking. You can put it back. No, no, keep it. You may yet find use for it. Where are we going? A dinner party. I'm not welcome at dinner parties. Well, that's not going to be a problem tonight. You're the host. Wow. What a powerful encounter. The way God called Matthew from the most unimaginable place. And that conversation with him with God and Peter, I mean, Jesus and Peter, it's amazing. And he says, Lord, but he, he's different. And then Jesus looked at him and said, get used to the different. <laughs> Turn with me to Matthew chapter 28. I have the scriptures ready. Matthew chapter 28. And we're going to read this from verses 18 to 20. Okay, are you ready? Matthew 28 is the first gospel of the New Testament. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples. It doesn't say go, 
therefore convert them make christians make kandasami into lurdu sami make mariyatha into meriyatha <laughs> make munsami into gidian it's just what we do now what the lord has to have mercy on us go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father son and the holy spirit and teach them to observe all things that i have commanded you and lo i am with you always even to the end of the age <laughs> jesus didn't say go and make christians even jesus did not call them christians in fact the first century enemy of the church called these guys who follow jesus as christians if you read acts chapter 11 it's up on the screen i'm reading from the expanded bible acts chapter 11 verse 26 says when he found saul he brought him to antioch for a whole year saul and barnabas met with the church and taught many people this many years after jesus died and resurrected and went to heaven you know many people there in antioch the followers disciples were called christians for the first time highlighting that they were followers of christ and perhaps that they were no longer viewed as merely a sect with judaism look at the voice translation says like this it was there in antioch where the term christian was first used to identify the disciples of jesus today our church this is the saddest reality our church the churches around the world are filled with christians and less with disciples we know how to do church we know how to behave as christians we have christian cars they have fish stickers christian bikes christian cycles christian houses கிறிஸ்து இந்த வீட்டிற்கு தலையாயிருக்கிறார் கிரைஸ்ட் இஸ் த ஹெட் ஆஃப் திஸ் ஹவுஸ் பட் இன் சைட் யூ ஆர் வாட்சிங் பிக் பிரதர் பிக் பாஸ் ஓ லாட் ஹாவ் மர்சி டோன்ட் கெட் மீ ஸ்டார்டட் ஆன் திஸ் the problem with the church is that we are more aware of raising christians but not aware of raising disciples do you hear that we are more aware of raising christians we wanted to go and tell the people jesus said three things make disciples he didn't say make christians baptize them and teach them what we do we make christians convert them which is a very very anti discipleship movement <laughs> he told them to make disciples that means you introduce them them into your kingdom not to your religion and baptize them what is baptize that means that you tell them the way of the cross and then you teach them the work of the cross and then you empower them by teaching the word so that they will continue to walk with that word to bring the ultimate fruit which is christ formed in us now this is the question what is to be a christian in a religious setting and what is to be a disciple in a kingdom setting because it's it's good to ask this question okay charles i'm right now a born again christian as i told you last week 28 years ago i started to follow jesus in a youth convention in october 2nd and i remember this very clearly so you may be thinking like this yes i am a christian i believe i want to be a disciple of jesus but how can i be a christian and what is to be a christian in a religious setting and what is to be a disciple in a kingdom setting let me give you some differences we're going to run this quickly religion focuses on converting people into their ideologies that's why we say come to jesus all the things will be solved how big lie is that come to jesus problem will be solved when was the last time your problems was solved just because you came to jesus 
And the Bible says, in this world you will have trouble. I have overcome, so will you overcome. He never guaranteed no trouble. He guaranteed there will be trouble. But he said, you will overcome. What do we do? We cut off the first part and we just give them, you are overcomers. That's why people come with such an excitement. And then boom, they faced with trials and tribulations and challenges and mess. They're like, my goodness, I would rather be somewhere else than facing this. Boom, they go. Kingdom focuses on relationship. Following the one. Religion teaches you how to judge. Look at it. Look at, look at the body of Christ where we are right now. We are so judgmental. We judge our denomination with other denominations. Charismatics against Pentecostals. Pentecostals against Evangelicals. Evangelicals against Baptists. Baptists against Lutherans. Lutherans against Roman Catholics. Roman Catholic against the Charismatic. It's such a mess. Such a mess. And if you read John 17, which is one of my favorite chapters, it's the high priest prayer, the prayer of Jesus praying to God. God, by this they will know that you have sent me, that they will be one. We are so divided. Anybody doesn't agree with my worldview? Anybody doesn't agree with my political view? Anybody doesn't agree with my, my, my way of doing church? They are like, something wrong, brother. <laughs> oh Lord, have mercy. Relationship teaches you how to judge. No. Relationship teaches you how to love. Religion teaches you how to fix God and others and eventually yourself. That's right. We even tell God. Some people I know, they are so Holy, they think they are so holy that they can even teach holiness to Jesus. I'm not joking. Actually, if Jesus comes to their church, he has to take notes on holiness. That's how. It's, it's like you come up with, with that, that Paul says this, you know, you, you do things. Even Jesus mentions in the gospel, it's like you they come up with ideas of men that think that looks like Something so beautiful, but actually it's a heaviness on people's heart. Relationship teaches you that when you abide in him, he will enable you. Can I tell you something? Religion focuses on being busy on Sunday for God. And doesn't matter if you're busy for God on the other days. Kingdom focuses on that you become a kingdom citizen and live and represent him every single day and every single area of your life. Wow. You know, one of the sad things that we do in the church, and that's why there is less disciples and more Christians, because we only judge someone who sins differently than us. For example, like there are two major sins in the church that is quite acceptable. More than two. Actually, you can even call three. But two major sins. One, for example, self-pity. That is commonly accepted. He's going through some troubling times. Self-pity. No, he has to overcome his self-pity. Victim mentality. And the number two, unforgiveness. And you can add gluttony and all those things as a list. But these are two major sins in, in the church that can be easily accepted. But then, we never judge anyone with unforgiveness. We never judge anyone with self-pity because it's commonly agreed. It's like an unwritten law. It's okay. Take care. I rub, I scratch your back, you scratch my back. It's fine. But then somebody some comes into the church and says, Man, I'm really struggling with porn or with my sexual identity. Like Henry Newman. Do you know Henry Newman? He was a Dutch priest. Later moved to uh, Canada. I, I think Canada or stayed somewhere. And... He says this, I am dispositionally 
attracted to the same sex. But because of the work of the cross in me, I choose not to indulge myself into my disposition, but to follow Christ. How many of us can honestly say, if someone comes to the church and shares this as a testimony, will he or she will be accepted? Why? We are more concerned about Christians. Nice, being flawless. But look at them. It's not about that. It's about being a disciple who's willing to take the cross and follow the master. I have written down this only three ways how you can be a disciple and how you can make disciples. The number one. And what are the three qualities you need for a disciple? Number one. Discipleship requires discipline. And this is a big one. Why? Because many times we, we feel like taking the cross and follow. But man, I don't feel like really doing it because ah, that was an emotion that I felt in the convention. Now that I'm working, I don't feel that anyway. That's why people say, I don't feel like brother to go to church. Why? Because it's no discipline inside. Read the scripture, Proverbs 22, 6. It says, direct your children into the right path. And when they are older, they will not leave it. It is a church response. It is my responsibility as your pastor to teach you this. If I'm not teaching you this, I'm doing a disservice to you. If I want just you to be a Christian, I will give you a nice Sunday message that you will feel so nice goosebump and you will say, yeah. And then I will send you my QR code for Google Pay or IB account. <laughs> yeah, you send to the pastor, send to the ministry, double fold is coming. Lord have mercy. You know, I can cheat you guys, but I can't cheat my master. One day I have to give accounts to him. That's why I'm telling you, I am least bothered if you are a Christian. Having a Christian name or a, or a biblical name or doing a Christian service, I am wondering, are you really a follower of Jesus, a disciple, a student of Jesus? That's what it means. Disciple means being a student, willing to learn, being flexible, humble, willing to allow the cross to come through in your life. Proverbs 12 verse 1 says, Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but he who hates reproof is stupid. There are three benefits of discipline. Number one, a discipline makes us wiser. Today, so many Christians make so many foolish decisions that brings the testimony of Jesus into utter shame. Why? Because they're Christians. They're not disciples. They go to church. They do church. They are not the church. They don't be the church. They are focused on activities, not on the cross to accomplish his work of Jesus on their lives. No. So discipline makes us wiser. Number two, discipline changes us. Brother, change, it's difficult, brother. Number three, normal Christian, ordinary Christian, Sunday Christian. Discipline changes us. If you are not transformed into the image of his son, then what's happening is you are not allowing the work of the cross, the way of the cross to deal with your life. Many times people just say, well, I'm a Christian brother. Yeah, I don't curse. I don't do idol worship. Okay, let's talk about idol worship. It's not about the idols that you go to the temple. How about 
your bank balance as an idol? How about your ministry as an idol? How about your properties? You know, so many churches fighting over properties. So many churches. I remember one of my friends, he, he's a Hindu. He's a judge. He's right now posted in South India, one of the major cities. And uh, he told me, two pastors came here, property discount, di dispute. He took the Bible. He reads Bible also. He's more into, you know, inclusive stuff. And uh, he took the Bible and he preached to them. If somebody, Matthew 18, if someone has a problem, you should first go leave the sacrifice at the altar. Go and reconcile. So he told the pastors, they are disputing over property. This guy, he said, first go reconcile. Then if you can't reconcile, come to me. He said, Charles, Nanba, he said, couple of your pastors, not, I mean, he calls pastors as you and as general. I, too, I gave them advice from the Bible. I was like, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Discipline makes us wiser. Discipline changes us. Discipline puts us above the situation. Are you disciplining yourself? Virat Kohli, a cricketer, he would not drink a juice that's from a container. He would carry his juicer. Why? Because he wants to make sure that what he eats, he wants to make sure that he doesn't take anything that he thinks that is not pure. You might see Virat Kohli never give any advertisement for any junk food or anything. A guy who is trying, Paul says, no, I run the race, you know, temporarily. The, like, you know, a guy who gets the price for a temporary position has to train himself like that. How much more you and me should be training? I leave this to you. Think about it. Go before the Lord and say, God, am I allowing the way of the cross to come and deal with me? Number two, discipleship means accountability. Today, there is almost less or even zero accountability in the body of Christ. Nobody wants to go and share their burdens or their challenges with others. Nobody wants to say, I'm struggling in this area. You know, you don't need to come to the pastor. You have small group leaders and you need to go to them. You have somebody who walked behind, ahead of you, you know, and you need to go to them and say, hey man, I'm struggling in this area. What is accountability? Account according to your ability. Look at this verse from James 5, 16. Therefore, confess your sins. I'm reading from the ESV version. Confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed and the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it's working. Wow. We don't. We don't do this. Today, no accountability. Everybody wants to do it. If the pastor corrects, who's he to judge me? I am a Christian. In fact, I am paying the tithe. And many pastors, because of the tithe, they keep their mouth shut. Can I tell you something? Some of you needs an accountability partner. I'm sorry. You can't keep going like this. You will one day fail miserably. You need somebody who can challenge you. I have mentors in my life who can challenge me for my marriage, for my personal life. I have allowed myself to be vulnerable. That is not the place to show a preacher, missionary, pastor. No, 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 no. Those titles doesn't define me. I want to see cross comes and deal with me where it needs to be crucified where it just needs to be done so that jesus can be formed in that area of my life 
and it's not easy it's sometimes very humbling but instead of being me pride and humiliated later i would rather go through this moments of humbling moments and trust the holy spirit to bring the ultimate fruit do you have an accountability partner would you be willing to share your stuff your darkest secrets to someone so that you can get help and grow guys this is the thing i wrote down here maybe you can take notes if you want to be forgiven just pray to god that's it you no need an accountability partner but if you want to be restored fully or wholly confess it to someone that's why i've said this before i'm going to say this revealing your feeling is the beginning of your healing you are sick as sick as your secrets are the more you hide the more sicker you get if you want to healing you got to stop concealing this is very important this is so important that you need you know sometimes we just pile it up and i know the indian culture i have seen that i have personally paid a humongous price sharing somebody your struggles and they use this as a bait to manipulate you and to try to i know the struggles we face in our culture you can't go to your pastor and say pastor last week hmm i was alone on friday night came back from my duty double duty and i was just flipping and then one after another and i end up watching a full blown porn and i know it's 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 our culture is like we pretend everything is fine and everything is okay and then boom it messes up i i i understand the the ramifications of sharing with humility to someone and they using that as a bait and they look at you next time hmm. this guy he was like a person up on arms down i know this guy's past i know the challenges but we can't use those things as an excuse still there are godly people god has kept in our nation who can really take come alongside with you help you to see the kingdom of god established it is possible my friends i am deeply 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 it's such a heaviness in my heart i'm sharing this to you don't just don't just pretend don't live in denial thinking ah oh, this is i'm just going to somehow somehow no there is no somehow there is no magic in the kingdom of god hello if jesus has to endure the cross we are his followers right we have to take our cross and follow him we like the cross of jesus but jesus said that cross is mine i have paid it <laughs> now i paid it for you to be free but it to be my disciple i am giving you your cross and that cross you have to carry and that cross means that cross will deal with your life wherever that needs to be dealt with area of insecurity jealousy anger bitterness pride religious pride you know uh, social pride caste pride positional pride you know like designation pride uh, the, or uh, or job pride all these things crossed has to come through and deal with that so that you know why you will be called a faithful servant <laughs> look at first timothy chapter 4 verse 11 and 2 teach these things paul is writing to timothy his protege teach these things and insist that everyone learn them don't let anyone think less of you because you are young be an example to all believers in what you say in way you live in your love in your faith and in your purity wow he didn't say make sure sunday be a nice good christian praise the lord ayya kartharku stotram avar nallavar yes he is nallavar how about you <laughs> oh lord have mercy <laughs> guys it's i'm i'm maybe adding some little humor but get this 
we are not here muck around just to do some activities number 3 time is running number 3 discipleship involves commitment commitment it's so important you can't be discipled if you are not committed to follow jesus if you say jesus i can follow you based on my convenience yeah if it feels good i will follow you if it is convenient for me i will follow you we live and especially in the, the in the city churches my goodness we have to get a reality check i would encourage you guys one of those sundays go to your village in a in somewhere in the town sit at the back of a some church and see how the village church believers behave they walk 2 3 kilometers carrying a bible probably they didn't have even food in the morning and they bring 5 or 10 rupees you know they call it in the mundani mudichi you know they tie it up in this come stay there is no ac nothing mat hard hard floors sit there worship the lord pray speak in tongues give that favorite their their treasures offering to the lord walk back many city churches i tell you based on convenience ah, i came back from job ah, i couldn't get up i felt so tired ah my my kids need to do this i got to go there ah you know i can watch online yeah i'll transfer transfer <laughs> you may not like what i'm sharing but you know what i am not trying to please you Look at that. Look at this. Galatians six nine. So let us not get tired of doing what is good, or that at the just time we will reap a reward of blessing if we don't give up. Listen, listen, listen. Write down this. If you don't remember anything, remember this one. God doesn't reward me for my calling. God rewards me. for my faithfulness of my calling god doesn't reward you for your calling god rewards for your faithfulness to your calling it's true that's why many are called few are chosen are you faithful are you faithful to the commitment that god has called you are you faithful to say you know what you know can i tell you guys sometimes it's very 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 tough in papa's house sometimes i'm feeling like man it's it's can i be honest with you sometimes i feel like it sucks but i know that i know i am not here to allow my feelings to determine my calling he who called me is faithful and i am going to try my best to be faithful to him the best example of commitment is how trinity works it's up in the screen our father wills it our jesus words it and our holy spirit works it what does it mean our father created this world Jesus redeemed this world. Holy Spirit occupies us and dwells in us as his temple. Wow. My friends, what I am encouraging you to do this. If you are saying I am a disciple of Jesus, make sure that you commit to pick up your cross and follow him. Make sure that you find an accountability partner so that you can grow make sure that you discipline yourself to see the kingdom of god manifest let's pray father i just want to thank you for this this morning 
and those who are watching this evening, I pray that you will, oh Father, you will help us. We are so sorry. We are so focused on, on Sundays. We are so thrilled to show up to church on Sundays, but not willing to follow you on the rest of these days. Father, we are sorry for just being a Christian, but not being a disciple. Help us to pick up the cross and follow you. We ask you to give us the grace to go beyond our feelings and to walk in the fullness of your calling. At the end of the day, Father, we know that you doesn't reward our calling. You rewards to our faithfulness to our calling. We thank you. Confirm your image of your son in us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I love you guys. Take care. Shalom. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for this time, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much for speaking with us, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much for for using our Talsana to share, Lord Jesus. Help us to apply in our life, Lord. Lord, help us to grow in your word, Lord, as Anna was sharing, Lord. Help us, Lord Jesus, and give us strength, Lord Jesus. Yes, Father, Lord Jesus. Lord, as we take communion, Lord Jesus, Lord, help us to be gratitude to you, Father, Lord Jesus. We don't want to take it lightly, Lord, but we want to be grateful lord jesus because your flesh and blood has has made us completely whole and forgiven us lord thank you so much for the lord jesus thank you so much for the lord jesus thank you so much for the lord jesus lord thank you so much for welcoming us to be a part of your communion lord jesus be we want to be grateful lord jesus thank you so much lord jesus as this flesh, Lord, and the blood, Lord Jesus, that forgives us, that restores us completely, Lord. Thank you so much, Father. As we take part of your flesh and blood, Lord, restore us, restore us, restore us, Lord Jesus. In Isaiah 53, Lord Jesus, it says that, Lord, you took all our punishment, you took all our pain, all our curse, all our all our addiction, all our all our inner and, and physical pain, Lord, all our sickness, all our disease on the cross, Lord. You took it, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord. In your owning, we find healing, Lord Jesus. We are made completely healed. We are restored. Thank you so much, Father Lord. Help us to be grateful. We remember your pain and your suffering. We remember the cross. We remember your sacrifice, the greatest sacrifice. We remember your love, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much, Father, for your beloved Son, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much for this, your flesh and blood, Lord Jesus, in our life. Your flesh and blood is our life, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much for this communion, Lord Jesus. And Lord Jesus, we are praying for the people who are watching this live and who are going to watch, Lord Jesus. Help them, Lord Jesus, Lord. Let them encounter you, Father, Lord Jesus. This is all for your glory, Lord Jesus. As we heard from Anna, Lord Jesus, Lord, help us to apply in our life, Lord Jesus. Even the people who are going to watch and who is watching this life, help them to apply in their life, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much for giving us an opportunity, the greatest privilege to worship you and hear from you, wait on you, Father Lord. Thank you so much, Father Lord. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. We'll see you next week. And have a beautiful week. God bless you. Shalom, shalom. Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you, the Lord turn his face.
histoire.